Hey guys, and welcome back to an amazing new video. Today, my KMM course finally went live. So that means you can now start to learn building multi-platform apps for both iOS and Android using our favorite language, Kotlin. And in this video, I will just give you a quick intro into what you will build, what you will learn, and then I'll just answer some commonly asked questions about my premium courses. And let's dive into it right away. I want to show you the app that you will build in this course. And you can see I have two emulators open here. And that is because you will, of course, also get two apps if you follow this course, because you will build the iOS and Android app. On the left here, we have the Android app. And both these apps actually support a light and dark theme. So we can also switch this here. If you want to see that this is fully supported, then Android also has a dark theme. But I just want to show you that there are two different themes. So you also learn how theming works on both iOS and Android. And you can already see that it is a translator app. So we can pick a language, so basically a source language and a target language, and then translate the source language to our target language. That is how translators work. For example, hello, YouTube, this is my first translation. If we then click translate, then we will see our translated text and it did not properly translate YouTube, <laughs> but you can see it probably translated that to German. We also have a translation history, which uses a local database and yeah, just shows us the translate the translations we did in the past. So that already shows you that you will learn about how you can use remote APIs in KMM project and just share that logic in Kotlin code between iOS and Android. You will learn about interacting with the local databases in KMM project, which basically yeah is used for this history here. And you will also learn how you can automatically observe all these changes from your shared code section. So specifically, that means we will be using Kotlin flows and setting them up in a way that you can, on the one hand, use them, of course, in your shared module, but also to observe them on iOS and Android. Then you will learn how you can, for example, copy these texts by clicking on copy. You can see we copied that to our clipboard. We can also speak it out loud here, which you will probably not hear. Maybe if I take my phone here and uh, hold it to my mic and then click play. Hallo Tube, das ist meine erste Übersetzung. Then you can hear a German text. We can, of course, swap our languages here. But of course, also choose a different language we want to translate to. For example, in South German, we can pick one of 28 different supported languages. Isn't that awesome? For example, if we wanted to translate this text into, I don't know, I know a lot of you are from India. So let's say Hindi, then you need to now tell me if this is the correct translation, but that works. And the same thing, of course, also works on iOS, which is, by the way, a native iOS app. So we have two native apps here, which is the biggest advantage of using KMM, so Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile, compared to solutions like Flutter or React Native, which don't bring you native apps. So in the end, we have a really high-performing native app here that also uses some native code and that also really feels native. For example, if we take a look here in our iOS dropdown and select the language, then this is really the iOS dropdown that you also have in native iOS apps. This looks way different than the one we have here for Android, which looks more like, yeah, very Android-ish. So just to give you a quick um, demo here that this also works in iOS, let's translate something from English into, um, I don't know, French maybe, oh, not Finnish, let's say French. And we type something like, hello, whoops, hello world, click translate, there we go. And then we actually get the translation here as well. And also if we actually um, cancel a translation, so we get back to our text field state and we click on an history item, then we simply load this translation into our text field from our local database. And this is actually not it yet. We also have a second feature apart from our translation feature, which is this speech recognition feature. So we can actually speak something into our microphone to transcribe that audio into text, which we are then going to translate. So to show you that on our uh, iOS simulator here, we can simply click this here. It says click record and start talking. And as soon as I then click record, um, we need to grant permission, which is currently in German here since my simulator is in German. Let's just click OK and OK for transcribing audio. If we then say hello, this is a text, not a text. This is a test translation, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's click stop. And yeah, it actually translated or transcribed something here into text, which we can then apply by clicking this check mark or retry this by clicking this retry icon. Let's apply this. And then we see this in our translation field where we can then translate it into, let's say, Greek. And there we go. Here we now have our 
um, audio transcribed text translated into Greek. So this is really a fully fledged translator app that is feature wise really close to apps like Google Translate or just all these popular translator apps. And as you can maybe also see, it was professionally designed by an agency. So I did not came up with these designs myself. I thought having great designs for an app you built on a course is good because uh, that encourages you to actually follow through and actually also have an app in your portfolio that just looks good. Because in the end, to impress future employers or future clients, it's just not enough to have a good code, but also to have yeah, a great looking app, since that is what they will use to judge your app on the first sight. So with this course, you will really learn about all the different scenarios you can face in a KMM project. This is not just a normal CRUD node app tutorial or so, which I already have on YouTube. No, this actually goes a lot further than that. You will learn about platform specific APIs like the speech recognition API and how you can use that in a KMM project. You will learn about theming, you will learn about remote APIs, a local database cache, all these things that you could normally deal with in an app, but these need to be implemented with proper care in a KMM project. Maybe for those who are already a bit familiar with KMM and asking themselves, what kind of code do we actually share? Do we share view models? Yes, we will share everything we can share in this app. So the only thing that we implement natively is the UI in a Jetpack Compose on Android and in Swift UI on iOS and the platform specific APIs, which you also need to implement specifically for each platform, like in this case, the speech recognition API. Everything else like the remote API for our translation feature, the local database, the colors maybe, the view models, including state mapping logic and all our domain models, our business logic, all that will be put in our shared code. And before I actually get to the limited discount and limited bonus section you will also get, I first want to talk about some prerequisites you actually should have before taking this course. On the one hand, and most importantly, this is a KMM project and iOS apps, at least native iOS apps, can only be built on a Mac OS system. So that means if you don't have a MacBook or a Mac, which runs Mac OS, then you will only be able to follow through this course by building the Android app, but you won't be able to implement this iOS app here because the simulator only runs on Mac OS. This is not a limitation of KMM actually, but rather a limitation of Apple, that Apple simply only wants us to be able to build native iOS apps on an Apple machine. Then what is helpful is some basic knowledge about building Android apps. So basic things like architecture, we're going to use a clean architecture MVI setup here. Um, you don't need to know all that from scratch and stuff like that. But it would be cool if you already um, watched maybe one or two of my project based videos that are free on YouTube here. Then for the Android side, what is helpful is a little bit of knowledge about Jetpack Compose, which can also be learned for free by using my Jetpack Compose playlist. You don't need to know anything about native iOS development. So you don't need to know Swift. You don't need to know Swift UI, which is kind of the equivalent of uh, Jetpack Compose for iOS because all that will be taught in the course from scratch. And yeah, that's really it in the end. So if you already watched some of my videos, then you will really be in a position to follow through this course. But if you're still a bit unsure, here are some commonly asked questions about my premium courses that I would love to answer. On the one hand, what happens if you follow through this course and at some point you're stuck? Maybe something just doesn't work the way you expect or the way I show in the course. So what do you really do in that case? So in contrast to how it typically works on a platform like Udemy, where the creator then does not even reply to your questions, I really want to do that differently. If you have any question about my premium courses, then you can simply hit me up either by email at mail at pl-coding.com or simply writing me a DM in Instagram at like underscore Philip Lackner underscore. You will find the links down below. Then you might ask yourself what actually happens if you get the course and you feel like, ah, that's not really what I expected. What can I do in that case? In this case, I do offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So. If you approach me and say, hey, Philip, um, I really expected something else out of this course, um, please refund my money, then I will do that without any further problems within a 30 day period after purchase. This happens super rarely with my courses because they just teach you what you expect them to teach you. But still, uh, I totally understand what uh, someone goes through when buying a course from, from a stranger in the end from the internet. So if you really feel like that and uh, it, it helps you to have that additional um, level of uh, safety kind of to, to get your money back, then I'm totally happy to offer this option. And next and last question number three is, 
will you get a certificate if you follow through this course? And absolutely, like for all my premium courses, you will get a certificate in the end. So um, there will be a quiz in the end. And if you succeed at that quiz, you will also gain a certificate. You will need to follow through this course to be able to answer the quiz questions, but you can repeat the questions if you fail. Coming to the most important part of this is where can you get this course? So on the one hand, for this very first launch week, I will offer a 25% discount on all my courses. So not only on this new one, but on all my courses, including all the bundles and where you basically get yeah, all my courses combined or just some of them, which you can then use to yeah, just save money even on top of that bundle discount to save a maximum amount of money. For that, simply enter the discount code KMM25 in uh, checkout and then the 25% discount will be applied for all products. And specifically for this new KMM course, I prepared a limited bonus section. So if you get the course now, then you will get an additional section at the end of this course in which which you will learn how you can test your KMM app. So on the one hand, you will learn about local unit testing of the shared code in this app here. You will learn about end-to-end -end and UI testing on Android, and you will also learn about end-to-end -end and UI testing on iOS. So you will be able to fully test a whole KMM project. Because you really often get the comments about my project-based videos that the testing section is missing. And of course, testing is a super important part of the industry and also um, really is part of being an industry-ready developer. But on the other hand, for, for such a normal video, it of course takes a lot of time and will probably like uh, append 50% of video length at the end of such a already three hour video. But for such a course here, I felt like I should add such a section as a bonus section for those who actually get the course now. So click the first link in this video description, get the course and don't forget to enter the discount code KMM25 to get 25% discount on all my courses. So if you already planned on maybe getting one of these, then now is really the best chance to do that and to save a maximum amount of money because I don't really have any other sale planned in future. Thank you so much for the support and everyone who gets this course you are also one of the reasons why i can also maintain this youtube channel and all these free videos so thanks a lot hope you enjoy the course and if anything is wrong just hit me up enjoy your week have an amazing day and i'll see you back in the next video bye bye